Hello, and Prenhaun Dwa from Swansea on the South Wales coast. As you can see, I've chosen the most typically British day weather-wise for this one, I'm afraid. Today we'll be heading up to Shrewsbury in England via the Heart of Wales line. Our route up to Shrewsbury today will see us cover around 122 miles or 196 kilometres, travelling via Clanworthwood and Church Stretton. Our scheduled journey time today is exactly four hours. It's also worth noting that this isn't the fastest way of travelling between Swansea and Shrewsbury, with services that go via Cardiff connecting the South Wales city and the Shropshire town in around three hours. That said, for reasons that will become clear as the video goes on, I think the Heart of Wales line is still worth considering if you're travelling between the two towns or you just want a scenic train ride. Anyway, I'm going to get out of the rain and get into the station and we'll go catch the train up to Shrewsbury. But before we do, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. The station is pretty basic, with just a newsagents, a cafe and a few vending machines making up the on-site food and drink offering. That said, the city centre is just a short walk away, so there isn't really much need for there to be a lot at the station, and it still features everything one might expect, such as nice clear departure boards, self-service ticket machines, and a staff ticket office. The vast majority of services to and from Swansea, including the one we're catching today, are operated by Transport for Wales. That said, the station does also see services from Great Western Railway through to London Paddington. Funny thing actually, I filmed this video on the day that most Class 800 family trains were taken out of service due to, well, being cracking trains. So the GWR service scene was uh, one of just a couple of services operating between Swansea and London on this day. And uh, needless to say, that caused a lot of chaos. Anyway, it's time to head over to the platform and await the arrival of our train. The service I'm catching today is the 1312 to Shrewsbury. And here comes the little diesel rail car that will be taking us on the four hour journey up to Shrewsbury in the form of this class 153 Super Sprinter. These were originally built by British Rail as two car long class 155s between 1987 and 1988 before most were converted to single coach units just a few years later. Only standard class or second class seating is offered on this train and as you can see this is laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration. There are no seat reservations offered on this service, so I'm free to sit wherever I like. As the train isn't busy, I'm going to sit in one of the nice and spacious Bays of Fours. But first, I thought I'd quickly show you around one of the airline style seats, seen as though they make up the majority of the seats on this train. As you can see, legroom is very tight. A tray table is also provided, and as you can see it's very small and, well, <laughs> to say it's flimsy would certainly be an understatement. That said, I found that the seats were nicely padded and rather comfortable overall. As well as featuring nice, big, fixed tables, the bays of four also have access to both 3-pin and USB plug sockets. Ventilation on these trains is provided in the form of opening the window. We depart Swansea on time at 12 minutes past one in the afternoon. Our four hour journey today will see us travelling at speeds of up to 75 miles an hour or 121 kilometres an hour. Immediately after departing Swansea, we pass Landor train maintenance depot where we can see rakes of poorly class 800s waiting to be fixed. We soon begin to take a westerly course as we make our way out of Swansea and towards Clanekley. Oh, and I should probably take a quick moment to apologise to all my Welsh viewers, as I'm aware I'm probably making a bit of a hash of some of the pronunciations of the towns and villages en route, so sorry about that. We briefly find ourselves running alongside the River Loiga near its mouth into Carmarthen Bay. I'm sure the passing vista looks rather stunning on a nice sunny day, but um, I'm afraid you're going to have to use your imagination for that as I forgot to order the nice weather. A short while later, we arrive in Clanekley. 
Now, with rugby being a big thing in Wales, I'm sure it's hardly a surprise to you that the town has its own rugby team. But what might come as a surprise to you is that they actually beat the famous New Zealand All Blacks back in 1972. Clanetley beat them 9-3 on the night and I'm sure it was quite a night to remember, or maybe not for some people as most of the pubs in town were drunk dry. While we were stopped at the station, the driver and conductor switched dens and we reverse out the same way we came in. Shortly after departing Clanetley, we join the southern tip of the Heart of Wales line and start heading north up the River Loiga towards Pantifernon. now it's time for what will inevitably be one of my shortest train tours ever. At the back of the train you'll find space for storing larger items of luggage as well as a couple of bicycle spaces. You can use the bicycle spaces at no extra cost but it is recommended that you reserve in advance. Also in this little vestibule area you'll find some fold out seating for if the train's busy. I found the saloon to be bright and airy thanks to the nice big windows allowing plenty of natural light to flood in. You'll also find space for storing smaller items of luggage on overhead racks. Towards the front of the train, you'll find space for wheelchair users. Next to this, you'll find a large accessible toilet. Transport for Wales recently refurbished their Class 153 fleet, and they certainly did a good job of making this part look rather bling. I felt as if I was entering a spaceship rather than a toilet on a train. As well as looking very snazzy, I was pleased to find that everything was clean, well stocked and in good working order. For those of you wondering, this train is Wi-Fi enabled, although as is often the case on trains, I couldn't get this to work. One last thing, no catering is provided on this train, so you're definitely going to want to make sure to pack your own food and drink. Eventually, we arrive at the village of Pantifernon. Other than having a really cool looking name, the village is notable for having been left all but abandoned in the 1960s due to fears over landslides. Unfortunately, the information I could find on this was somewhat limited, so if you happen to know more, be sure to leave a comment. After Feuerwach, our next stop is Chlandelo. Chlandelo is notable for the nearby Glanrid Bridge Collapse, which, on the morning of October the 19th, 1987, resulted in part of the bridge and a Swansea to Shrewsbury service being washed away by the River Toey during heavy rain. Sadly, of the ten people on the train, four were killed by the incident. As we continue north through the sopping wet Welsh countryside, here's just a quick and shameless insert about my Patreon page. Patrons gain access to most of my videos two weeks before everyone else, and best of all, without all those pesky ads. This is available for as little as $1 per month, and you'll find a link to my Patreon page in the top right corner now, as well as in the description below. Our next stop after Clan Gardog is Clan Rada. The village is thought to be the final resting place of Owen Glendower, who led a Welsh uprising against the English in the early 1400s. He is notable for being the last native Welshman to hold the title of the Prince of Wales. The 
The next major point of interest is Kinhordi Viaduct. The 18-arch structure was built between 1867 and 1868 and carries the railway for some 850 feet or 259 metres over the valley below. Approaching the halfway point, we stop at Clanerted Wells. Other than its somewhat contested status as the smallest town in the UK, with a population of just 850, the town is also known for its annual Man vs Horse Marathon. <laughs> this is exactly as it sounds, with runners competing against riders on horseback over 22 miles or 35 kilometres. <laughs> Not only was I completely baffled to find out that this was an actual thing, but it's actually been won by a runner on two occasions since it was first held in 1980. Eventually, the rain begins to subside a little as we close in on Chlandrindod Wells. Other than its status as a spa town, Clandrindod Wells is also known for its annual Victorian festival, when many of the locals dress up in Victorian clothes and participate in activities typical of the era. We'll be stopped here for around 15 minutes while a crew change takes place, affording me the opportunity to step off the train for a breath of fresh air. As well as the Class 153s, these two car Class 150 sprinters also operate services between Swansea and Shrewsbury. The onboard experience on both trains is generally speaking pretty similar, with both types of sprinter being kitted out to a similar spec. Before too long, it's time for us to go our separate ways as we begin to take a north-easterly course towards England. It's also worth noting that many of the stops on the Heart of Wales line are request stops, meaning that the train will only stop if someone wants to get on or off, such as here at Pennebont. A short time after departing Dollar, we crossed the impressive Nucleus Viaduct. It was completed in 1865 and boasts 13 spans. Almost immediately after crossing the viaduct, we pass Nucleus Station, which is the last stop in Wales, albeit it's a request stop. Just over 10 minutes later, we arrive at Knighton. While the town itself is in Wales, the station is just across the border in England. After departing Knighton, we find ourselves straddling the border for a few minutes before arriving at our next station stop of Bucknell. About half an hour out of Shrewsbury, we join the Welsh Marches Line, where we'll remain for the remainder of the trip. A few moments later, we call at Craven Arms, which takes its name from a nearby hotel. Just as with the rest of our route today, the last little run into Shrewsbury is really quite picturesque as we make our way through the Shropshire Hills area of outstanding natural beauty. <laughs> There's a bit of a mouthful for you. It 
Eventually, we find ourselves passing Shrewsbury Town Stadium, New Meadow, signifying that we are near the end of our journey today. While the Class 153s are by no means the most modern trains, and they're sure as heck not the quietest either, I still found them to be quite good for the job, thanks to their good ride quality, comfortable seating, and the fact that I just found them to be equipped with everything one might need for a journey of this length. The Heart of Wales route between Swansea and Shrewsbury, while by no means the quickest, is rather scenic and, as I hope you were able to pick up, steeped in history and quirky facts as well. For this journey, I was travelling on an Explore Wales 4 in 8 pass, which I'll leave more information about in the description, but the one-way advance purchase fares for this route can be picked up for as little as £14.50 or £9.55 with a rail card. For a journey of over 120 miles, I think that represents pretty good value for money, don't you? As always though, these are just my thoughts and opinions, so be sure to let me know what you thought of the train and route in the comment section below. Now of course, no train video to Shrewsbury is complete without giving a mention to the Seven Bridge Junction signal box, as it's the largest mechanically operated signal box still in operation anywhere in the world. And with that, welcome to Shrewsbury, which is the busiest station in the county of Shropshire and where we've arrived approximately five minutes early at ten past five. I do hope you enjoyed this week's video. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday at 4pm British time. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Friday!